Welcome. Everything is fine. You are listening to Forking Bullshirt, the Good Place podcast. I'm Vivian. And I'm Jason. We'll be the architects of your journey into the afterlife. This week, we're talking about episode three, Tahani Al-Jamil. It was written by Aisha Mahar, who is a writer for Parks and Recreation, and it was directed by Beth McCarthy Miller. She's directed episodes of Happy Endings, Parks and Recreation, Brooklyn 99, Modern Family, etc. So she's worked with Michael Schur before. Yes. Yes, they both have. This episode aired September 22nd, 2016. So we'll get right into it. At the beginning of this episode, Tahani delivers a housewarming gift, a beautiful plant, to Eleanor and Chidi. Chidi suggests that Eleanor return the gesture, but she is resistant. Michael sits down with Chidi and encourages him to focus his energies on new hobbies. So a couple things I want to talk about first, getting uh, getting the philosophy right out of the way. Chidi's chalkboard. Yeah, it's Chidi's chalkboard time. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Chidi's chalkboard. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Chidi's chalkboard. <laughs> Cute theme music, basically. Yeah, basically. All right, so last week we were talking about uh, Chidi's questionable choice to perhaps start with Heidegger, but we actually see that Chidi is thankfully not starting with Heidegger. He's starting with the much more relatable and accessible Aristotle. So on his chalkboard, he's got just a, a bit of history, and then, of course, he's got his good actions make you a good person, And he references here Nicomachean Ethics, which is one of uh, Aristotle's most famous works. And in that work, he says that when a person does virtuous actions by chance or under advisement, they are not necessarily a virtuous person, Mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting because that's sort of what we've been talking about, right? Well, it's like fluke, right? It's like you just happen to do something good. Yeah, but he also says under, like, under advice, which is what Chidi is giving Eleanor to this episode, right? Mm -hmm. So even though she will do some good things this episode under his advisement, that doesn't necessarily make her suddenly a good person. Right. Like she has this fake epiphany at the end of the episode saying, I'm a good person and I really do belong here. Mm -hmm. Eleanor, it's going to take a little longer than that. (laughs) So to be a truly virtuous person, Aristotle thought that One's virtuous actions must meet three conditions. They are done knowingly, they are chosen for their own sakes, and they are chosen according to a stable disposition. So they're not done on a whim or in any way that the acting person might easily change his choice about. So it's not done because, well, it was convenient to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's done knowingly, so it's not by accident. Right. And it's done for its own sake, just to do the good action, not for something that you're going to get out of it. Right. Right? I thought that was kind of interesting because we will see and we do see Eleanor kind of do things a bit on a whim this episode or do it under advisement. And it doesn't mean, oh, man, she's like a totally great person now, which the episode thankfully shows us like she hasn't completely learned her lesson. It's not going to be an overnight fix. For Eleanor. Like, we can't change our behavior at the drop of a hat, but change is possible eventually. Aristotle also thought that people who lack virtue should be understood as unfortunate rather than wicked. They shouldn't be scolded or punished because they just need better teachers and more guidance. Right. Yeah. And he believed that people that don't grow up in healthy societies have little to no chance of becoming virtuous. So what information we have of Eleanor that she had crummy parents that are probably in the bad place. We can assume a little bit from that, that maybe she didn't grow up in the best environment Mm -hmm. and that affected her opportunities to be a virtuous person that affected her education as a virtuous person, I guess. Right. So Aristotle says she's has a lower chance to becoming virtuous. Yes, because she didn't grow up in a like a healthy environment with good right. teachers. So it's not really an easy, easily learned trait. It may come easier to others, but you need good teachers. That's what he believed, that you need proper moral exemplars, right? And if her parents were not those kind of people, then it may be a lot more difficult for her to be that kind of person. It's interesting to think about the timeline that these 
philosophers grew up in and practiced and how different their beliefs and their thoughts might be in present times. And yet I think that his work is still very relevant today. Oh, for sure. Yeah. However, I do believe that people definitely can become virtuous if they grew up in a crummy household or neighborhood or city. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We see examples of that all the time. Of course. Mm -hmm. That you don't need to have amazing parents and live in, you know, white picket fence neighborhood to become a good person. You don't need any of that. But it certainly gives you an advantage in life to have kind, loving, good-natured adults around you, whether Mm -hmm. those are parents, caretakers, teachers. Yeah. Yeah. So last episode, we were discussing our thoughts on Chidi's lessons, lesson plans, and we sort of came to an agreement that he should have research and real life experience, like a mix right. of the two. Yeah. And we see here that Chidi is following with that plan. You know, he starts the episode and he's doing a lesson and he's got his full like professor gear on and I want to laugh so hard at it because mm-hmm. what's with the turtleneck? Anyway, <laughs> um, so when... Ho- Tahani gives Eleanor their housewarming gift. He tells Eleanor that she should return the gesture. Like hey, he's it's time for some practical learning. Exactly. He's leading her by the hand. He's putting her under advisement. Like if you yeah. want to be a good person, maybe that's the first step. You because she take. doesn't see that at all. She has no, you know, that's not even on her radar. Mm-mm. Not even a little bit. She completely assumes that Tahani has ulterior motives. Mm hmm. Now, do you think Chidi is oblivious completely to Tahani's condescending nature and how she talks down to everybody? No, I don't think he's oblivious, but I think that he believes that she belongs there because he's seen no evidence to the contrary. Right. So I think he's just operating under the assumption that we are in the good place. She hasn't said she doesn't belong here. Mm Mm-hmm. She has done good things in her life. Okay. There we go. So I think he's just operating under the assumption that everybody in the good place is a good person. Even if they might have some flaws like anxieties or maybe a little bit like condescending, that kind of thing. Sure. Because I know he does mention it near the end of the episode that, sure, she may be a little condescending or whatever. So we know that he does see that, Mm -hmm. but just seems like... He's making Eleanor seem like she's insane for thinking that Tahani's manipulative. I think he's responding more so to Eleanor judging Tahani's motivations. Yeah. Because people can be condescending, right? (laughs) But to say something like, oh, well, she just wants us to talk about how great she is and, you know, she doesn't give a crap about us. Like, Eleanor's... Uh, I don't totally disagree with Eleanor. Okay, okay. Those type of people drive me insane. <laughs> no, they totally do for me, too. Like, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. There. And half the time, I think that's the only reason that some of these people do the things I do is so people will talk about them and continue saying oh what great people they are and look at all these amazing things that they've done and that's the only motivation they have to do good things so people will say how great they are yeah like it's very self-serving extremely okay does that kind of show us the difference here between chidi and tahani because chidi looks at people and assumes they have the best intentions Mm -hmm. Whereas Eleanor looks at people and assumes they have the exactly. worst intentions. That's why it's perfect pairing them up together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're opposites, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know we've seen the, the set piece throughout the show so far, but the flowers. I noticed it especially in this episode. There's literally flowers everywhere. And I know I looked back in other episodes and there's flowers everywhere as well. But I feel like there's even more this episode there's flowers on the frozen yogurt stand tables there's flowers filled into Hani's living room hmm. in the on the streets everybody walking past in the background is holding a bouquet of flowers oh my goodness it's really? really weird 
Interesting. And, of course, Michael's office is full of flowers still. It's just... It seemed so prominent, this episode. It really stood out to me, and it didn't so much the previous episodes. It was really kind of off-putting almost because there were just so many of them <laughs> you're like everybody what is walking by has a bouquet of flowers <laughs> what is this a nursery <laughs> i know like what's going on here it's just like edible arrangements or something <laughs> well i don't think they're edible although it no. is the good place so maybe maybe everything's edible yeah oh man that would be so weird it would be like willy wonka's i don't like it i don't know like i don't okay. want people like m- munching on buildings it's weird <laughs> um teacup could literally be <laughs> an edible hot dog. That's terrible. That's gross. Yes, that's gross. Anyway. What did you do? You, do you have any thoughts about the flowers? Like why they chose to do that? They're fresh. They s- signify um, beginnings, uh, happiness, friendliness, love, everything warm and fuzzy, basically. Yeah. And it's it's perfect for the good place. It just seemed really in your face. Oh, okay. But if you didn't notice it, then maybe it was all in my face. Well, I've always noticed that there's a lot of flowers, but I didn't notice that everyone seemed to be walking around with like a bouquet or anything like that. Yeah, so. I noticed it a few times. Yeah. So hmm. I'll have to keep an eye out in the next next coming up episodes. Yeah, I guess so. Um, Michael said that searching for moral truths is pointless in The Good Place because they know all the answers. <laughs> yeah. Are you at all surprised, like I am, that Chidi hasn't tried to find out what those answers are now that he has access to them? Like, I feel like I'd be curious if I were in his shoes. You know, this is something that you've put in so much time and thought into. Like, what are the big questions about life? And now you actually have access to those real answers. Right. You've got a Janet you can ask. And, well, he's got a Michael he he's can ask Michael too, he right? Can ask. Sure. He can ask either of them. I just feel like I'd be curious. Mm-hmm. I would probably want to know. What would the first question you'd want answered be? Oh, my goodness. I don't even know. That's the thing. It's like, I feel like I would just need the book of answers so that I could, like, sift through it. Because I don't think I could start with one question. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. Yeah. I'd ask if there was intelligent life outside of Earth. Cool. Are there aliens out there? Are Is there a good place full of weird species? Hmm. I guess I was thinking more like moral questions. Lame. <laughs> well, that's just because he says like moral truths are pointless now because they know all the answers to those questions. Yeah. Although I would want to know if there are aliens out there. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and the last thing I want to say for, for this part was... I like Chidi's manuscript title, <laughs> Who We Are, <laughs> who we are. <laughs> and Who We Are Not, Practical Ethics and Their Application in the Modern World, semicolon, <laughs> a treatise on the... On the what? On the what. We could fill in the blanks. A treatise on the moral ambiguity of the homo sapien species. When... Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Ellipsis. <laughs> something else. <laughs> When presented with the <laughs> colloquial <laughs> differential equations. Are you just looking for big words right yes. now? Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but I do, I do find it kind of interesting that he's got like who we are and who we are not. Any thoughts on that? It's basically just what makes us human. Okay. What makes us who we are. What makes us who we are? We don't need to say in who we are not. Ah, <laughs> There's really no point. Interesting. See, I see it differently. I find it interesting because we see that Chidi has a very hard time making decisions, right? Right. And saying one specific thing. He likes to keep his options extremely open. Yeah. So saying something like who we are and who we are not is just open it's super open and it not only that but it doesn't answer anything it doesn't right? ask anything either yeah it just says who we are as people and who we are not as people and both of those things yeah but at the same time it can be seen as kind of like black and white like this is who we are and this, this is, is who, who we are, are not. not right 
And should we be who we are? Should we be who we are not? Because what if who we are, like Eleanor, is not that good of a person versus what she's not, a good person and something that she should strive to be. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. I'd love to hear thoughts from you guys, like listeners, um, if you had any, you know, feelings about that title. Like, was it interesting to you or did it kind of just... Was it just a gag? Yeah, was it just a gag and it wasn't it wasn't anything of importance. All right, so we can move on. Eleanor visits Tahani, offering her a basket of pears, unaware that her gift is a faux pas in Chinese culture. Eleanor decides that she will join Tahani the following day on her mission to meet with everyone in the neighborhood. Eleanor believes Tahani is the one who wrote the note, stating, You don't belong here. So I had no idea that pears were considered bad luck in Chinese culture. It was great looking that up and yeah, finding out why. Yeah, sharing a pear is a homonym of to separate. Yeah. People believe that sharing pears with friends or loved ones brings negativity into your relationship. And it could cause you to you know, separate, I suppose. Yeah. And that's why giving a gift of pears to somebody who's in a relationship, you're kind of wishing them to separate. Yeah. Which isn't very nice. <laughs> no. And obviously is not at all intended by Eleanor. Of course not. She has no clue, right? No. She's like, how can I one-up Tahani? Let's give her an edible plant. And speaking of Tahani, apparently talking about her gets uh, Eleanor a little bit turned on. <laughs> Just a little bit. I mean, she has curves everywhere. And cappuccino skin. and Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm complimenting her and kind Jeez. of turned on. Yeah. Um, so that's our first hint that Eleanor might not be heterosexual, which or, I kind of you know, like. A hundred percent. She could be like ninety ten. Yeah, but that <laughs> still counts. That still counts. So I think that's kind of interesting. Like that we've got, we've got Eleanor, and on one side she's got this not exactly soulmate, but there's a relationship developing between her and Chidi, mm-hmm. and um, like a person of color. And then we've got on the other side, this like woman who she's frustrated by, but somewhat attracted to, who's also another person of color. And I kind of like that. <laughs> you know, we've got, we've got two, not really love interests, but like two characters that are very close to her that may have some sort of romantic or sexual that aren't white. relationship that aren't white. That aren't white Americans. Yeah, we don't see that all the time. And that's nice to see. All right, moving on. The next day, Eleanor joins Tahani on her visit to the neighborhood. Meanwhile, Michael encourages Chidi to try cartography. In a flashback, we see Eleanor's boyfriend suggest that they boycott a local coffee shop, and Eleanor is extremely defensive. Now, this begins some editing questions for Mm. the, the extended versions of the episode versus what was shown on the network TV. Mm hmm. And... It changes the order of some scenes and cuts out some, actually cuts out an entire scene that isn't totally necessary, but it's not unnecessary. Mm. It shows some good interaction between Eleanor and Tahani. If you can, I do recommend finding the extended versions because you're missing out. Yeah, all the extended versions are on the NBC website. If you are in the United States, you have access to all of those episodes. If you're not in the United States, you may need to find other ways to find it, <laughs> like we did. Yeah. Anyway. So the set for the cartography scene's not great, right? Not, not really. No! It's pretty lame, Millhouse. Pretty <laughs> lame. It's pretty obviously a green screen and some set dressing. Yeah. I was a little disappointed with that. I mean, in all honesty, the whole show is pretty set-y stage yeah, presence. Yeah. We, yeah, we've gotten some comments actually about how some people don't really like the the sets that much because they it's feel such like a soundstage sets yeah. yeah it feels like something you could easily pass by while you're taking a tour of like warner bros um i really like janet in this episode i mean she's not really janet because she's acting super differently but i like that all the things that they make her do gives darcy Carden a chance to do something different and to kind of stretch her wings a little bit 
and be really funny. Like yeah. there are really great funny moments in this episode. And when she's doing her whole fun fact thing and she's like, fun fact, Janet is me. I laugh <laughs> every single time. It's so good. And it's not just the writing. It's the way she delivers the lines. Oh, yeah. It's perfect. With, with just such openness and such enthusiasm, you know? Yeah. So I love it. Yeah. I think she's fantastic. Uh, what do you think of Eleanor in the flashback? I wasn't a huge fan of these flashbacks. Oh, okay. So you're taking that stance on the flashbacks this yeah. episode. So I've got to be pro because you'll be con. Well, I totally <laughs> understand. Like, I'm I'm fine with them really driving home the fact that she's a bad person. I said in the first episode, we have three episodes of Eleanor's flashbacks early on. We have another few later on, but... I'm fine with them driving home that nail, but eh, it's just, it's a coffee shop and the owner is a perv. She wants coffee. I mean, I'd probably do the same thing. Really? Oh yeah. If the coffee shop is on the way to work, I'm not going to go out of my way to get coffee somewhere else. See, I'm totally the opposite. I would. That would mean you have to get up earlier. I still would do you it. You totally would not. I would do it. <laughs> you would not. I would do it. And you know why? It's no. because I've already had a boss that has sexually harassed me. That's true. And I true. would not tolerate that. And I'm totally fine and with I'm... never going back to that place. And I tell everybody about that place. Yes. And I'm totally cool with not going there. So if you saw this video of this guy harassing a woman... Who comes in for an interview? Like, yeah, obviously the the, the, the video, <laughs> I'm laughing and it's horrible. The video is supposed I, to be funny, but at is. the same time, it's stuff that's actually happened to people yeah, in the world. Yeah, it's stuff that happens, right? So constantly, if I saw a video like that where the owner is clearly sexually harassing someone. He's a total jerk. No, there's no way. I'm not going in there. I'm not supporting you. I hope you. I hope this town runs you out. <laughs> I seriously hope you close yeah. down. Like, that's how I feel about people like that. That you shouldn't even have a business. I don't even <laughs> think it would go very far, though, because I feel like it would get shut down really quickly. Well, yeah. I mean, there's going to be, like, a lawsuit against this guy or Investigation and everything. Sure. But to continue to go there is to say that I don't care, basically. Or I care more about my, my convenience coffee. than yeah, I do about Which people, people do. Oh, no, I'm not saying that people don't do this. I just think that I would definitely be Eleanor's boyfriend in this mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah. But to take Eleanor's side in her examples, there's so much out there that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Where do you draw the line? Do you do exactly what her boyfriend says and do it when you can? And when you can't, you just secede. So, oh, great examples, current events right now, United Airlines. Yes, exactly. And there's a lot of people saying, I'm never going to fly United again. Mm -hmm. And Eleanor in this case might be like, well, pff, what am I going to do? If I need to go on a flight and United's the cheapest one, then I'm going on it too bad. Yeah, so I she takes care. it from zero to 100 where there's there's leeway. Like sometimes you have no other option. Mm -hmm. And you just, you have to do it. And with a coffee shop, there's more than likely another option. Oh, yeah. She says, oh, it's so close to here. But yeah. come on, there's coffee shops on like every corner. <laughs> there's multiple coffee shops on most streets, right? Like there's got to be something that's close by that's got good coffee. Which, by the way, you might not find a scorpion in. How does she <laughs> not care about that? I think it's because she's from scorpion. Arizona. Yeah. But like, she's like, whatever, it's normal. Yeah, scorpions, I guess, are like a regular occurrence, but no thanks. Mm -mm. No way. <laughs> uh, for example, at the at my old job that yep. I hated and had a crappy boss, I would never go back there. I mean, you also don't eat their food. I don't eat the food that's there. It's a chicken wing place, and I'm a vegetarian, so there you go. <laughs> but yeah, like that's see, that's an easy choice for me to make. I can very easily make that choice but yeah. someone like you you like chicken wings i guess you could go there if you wanted to so you could go but you've chosen not to yes why 
because I don't want to support that guy. Okay. There's but and this is it's the also same it's also not something that I get. It's not a daily routine where I go past it every day on the way to work. Okay, so what if for example, Jason loves burritos. I do. So, what if for example, that had happened to me while I was working at Mucho Burrito or Quesada? Would you stop going to that establishment? There's not another burrito place. Oh, okay. I see where your allegiance <laughs> Hold on. Lies. I didn't wow, say anything. A, on the scale of what is most important to Jason, burritos is at the top and, you know, like slightly lowers, you know, his girlfriend. I don't think. I don't <laughs> is think, that what we're saying? No. What I'm saying is there's more important way to strike against a company. Okay. For example, one person stopping from not going to a burrito place Mm -hmm. is not going to do anything at the end of the day what is that doing it's not giving him the money that you worked hard for it's it's saying basically like but that doesn't affect him at all your food or despite how good your coffee is or how good your food is Mm -hmm. i don't approve of what you do here okay to play devil's advocate there like he doesn't care he doesn't know if it's enough people gonna... do it, then people sure. Then he if will. enough people do it, absolutely. And so, by saying that I don't matter because I'm only one person, mm-hmm. then you're eliminating one person from the cause of like from boycotting, right? Right. So, Eleanor here is saying, "Oh, I don't care. I'm not going to boycott him." She's one less person who mm-hmm. will then exactly. So, so that's how important it is for one person to say no because so many people add up to so many people exactly so one person becomes 10 becomes 20 becomes 100 becomes 500 and that one dollar coffee becomes 500 dollars at the end of the month Mm -hmm. they might not make rent exactly mr fish odor kicks them out (laughs) yeah yeah so i'm definitely on his side but i also see where eleanor like i get why she's defensive because I think that Eleanor really believes that everyone's motivations are corrupt. I think that she sees her boyfriend in the same way that she sees Tahani. Like, he's talking about boycotting this place, probably just because he thinks it's a good idea to do, but she sees his motivations as self-serving, as like, well, People look will how be great proud of me. I, yeah, look how great I am. Okay. I'm a good person because I'm boycotting Andy's coffee. Because that's what she says. She's like, well, you're not a better person than me because you won't support a guy who touched a boob once. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not the point. It's not that he's had, you know, physical. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think about it like that. Contact with like a woman. Because he seemed genuine to me. Someone. He seemed genuine to me. And he probably is. But I don't think showing you that Eleanor doesn't think that people are like that. Mm-hmm. She thinks everybody is. Has got their own agenda. Like, interesting. Okay. Out there for themselves. She's so jaded. I think that's exactly it. Okay. She doesn't think that people are just good for the sake of being good. All right. So that's where I end up on it, but. I can dig it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Totally. All right. Cool. Well, that was like a super long conversation about that, (laughs) but that's fine. You know, that's what these are for. All right. So we'll move on. Michael suggests journalism and arc welding as other possible hobbies for Chidi. Michael confesses he read Chidi's manuscript and found it too confusing. That evening, Eleanor snoops into Hani's home and steals her diary. When she returns home, Chidi is doubting his worth as a teacher, and he insists that the note was simply a manifestation of Eleanor's insecurities. Journalism and arc welding. Yeah, yeah. That little hat on Chidi. Oh, perfect. Oh, so cute. And of course, the really awkward moment where Janet's putting it on him. Her overt sexuality is a little disconcerting. Yeah, it's weird. It's a little weird. She's she's so childish. She's not acting of her own... Volition? Yeah. (laughs) Like, she's kind of been rewired to act this way, and that's that's the part that really creeps me out. It's like, she's not human, and this isn't how she actually wants to act. Right. Well, she doesn't want anything. That's a thing. She's not she's, human. Yeah, she's not human. She doesn't have actual desires. Yeah. So that makes it weird and creepy. Which I'm thankful that Chidi has that reaction and he's not like, hey, baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or he's not responding like, 
you know, with a. Oh, I like this or, new Janet. Yeah, yeah, he's genuinely weirded out by yeah. this. Mm-hmm. I noticed in that scene that the newspaper is titled the Picayune Gazette, and I had no idea what Picayune means. It has a few definitions. It means petty, worthless, <laughs> of little value or account, <laughs> insignificant. Oh no. Yeah. I did not look that up. So, in one way, it could just mean that the newspaper is cheap. Like, it's free, right? Because everything in the good place is free. Sure. But on the other hand, it's saying, this isn't really important. Your thoughts are insignificant. A little harsh, you know? <laughs> a little bit. A little harsh. <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a funny little thing I noticed. I was like, oh, I've got to bring that up. <laughs> In a flashback, Eleanor argues with her boyfriend about supporting morally questionable people before breaking up with him. Eleanor admits that she feels insecure around good people. She comforts Chidi, who then asks Michael to help rewrite his manuscript. So we already sort of talked, well, we did talk about the flashbacks at length, but I didn't mention that here, um, Eleanor admits to reading her boyfriend's private emails, so we see that she's continuing that kind of snoopy behavior in The Good Place. Yeah. When she tries to get Tawny's diary. Mm-hmm. This girl has serious trust issues. Mm-hmm. You don't snoop in people's stuff if you don't have trust issues. Mm-mm. I've done it before. Not proud of it. It was when I was younger. And it was because I had serious trust issues. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's not great. It's not a great shining moment for Eleanor. It's not great that she's continuing to do it. But there is something to be said about the fact that she returns the diary and doesn't actually read it. Now, in the network version of this episode, mm-hmm. she you, the scene where she brings it back and puts it back in the drawer, all she does is she puts it back in the drawer. Mm-hmm. She sneaks up to the, the desk and she slips it in. But in the extended version, she actually opens it up for a second and looks at it and then just closes it and then puts it in the drawer. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, that extended version shows a much better view of Eleanor than what we see on TV because it shows that she didn't actually look at the diary. Mm. Because as Mm -hmm. soon as she opens it, she's like, nope, I got to close it back. I... I'm not going to look. And then she puts it in. Whereas watching it on TV, you might not know whether she looked at it or not. Because all she does is put it back in the drawer. So mm-hmm. there's no real evidence that she didn't look at it. That's true. It just, I didn't think about that. It just solidifies it that she didn't. She wanted to, mm-hmm. but she thought better of it and just put it back in. Yeah, it's like those little voices of insecurity mm-hmm. at the back of your mind saying you should look, you yeah. should look. Look, look, look. And her being strong enough to ignore them. Exactly. So. And it's nice to see that. And it's really only like a five second scene. They, I think they should have kept it in. I agree. There's a lot of stuff that I wonder why they even bothered to take any of it out. Yeah. Gotta get those ads in. Yep. We're glad that NBC put it on. Yes, we are glad. Very glad. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here mm-hmm. talking to you beautiful people. Wonderful, fantastic Truly good people. I'm sure you're all gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, you look great today. Your hair oh. is flawless. Smoking. <laughs> so. Michael's really mean to Chidi. I mean, I get that he's trying to help him, but he's really mean to him. Yeah? You think so? Yeah. I mean, he tells him his life's work is awful. What if it is? You sugarcoat it. I mean, it's 3,600 pages, and did you hear the title? Yeah, but what (laughs) does he have to lose to tell him it's great? That's true. I mean, but I think there's some value to what he's saying. Like, he's trying to be constructive. That's true. He is trying to be constructive. It's just, he's still pretty mean about it. Mm. Okay. Like, I literally had to learn what a headache was because I got one for reading your manuscript. Yeah, it's not great. I mean, I didn't say he was nice about it. But yeah. at the same time, it's it's that He's... kind of brutal honesty that maybe Chidi needs at that moment. Right. Because maybe he's had too many people tell him that his work has been great. 
and not be honest with him yeah. in his, you know, life on Earth. So maybe he thinks that he needs that kind of push. Right. That's true. Um, I do kind of like that Chidi decides he's going to continue. Yeah, he made a decision. Mm-hmm. He made a decision. Good for Chidi. Good on I mean, you. it's it's the decision of barely making a decision. <laughs> but it's something. I think Chidi being confronted with all these new hobbies was terrifying because he doesn't want to do anything else. But also the idea of doing new things, starting something different is just scary. Mm-hmm. No matter what it is, yeah. I suppose. Um because Chidi is really bad at making decisions. But I don't know. I like I like that he decided to stick with it, you know? I thought it was nice. It's your life's work. Might as well be your afterlife's work. Mm-hmm. I like that Eleanor does comfort Chidi. Like, she actually does make him feel better. He says to her, you know, my life's work was garbage. And I wasted my time on it. And this Michael guy who knows everything in the world can't figure it out. And she says, no, like, you should be proud of the work that you've done. Don't listen to what anybody has to say. Even if it's Michael. Even if it's Michael. Like, just because he knows a lot of things on in the world and he knows a lot about the afterlife doesn't mean that he's going to understand everything. And it doesn't mean that you need to feel bad about what you did. You know, that you should be proud that you were doing that work because it's important work to do. Yeah. Regardless it's of... important to you. Yeah. As exactly. a person. It was nice. And I think it's that's... genuine. Yeah. It's totally genuine. She's not just trying to make him feel better, which was important. Mm-hmm. I think that she was saying that from the heart, mm-hmm. not out of guilt or because someone told her she should be nice. I yeah. think she was just doing it because she felt like it was a good thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm seeing her grow again. It's nice. I'm a little proud of my, my Eleanor in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's nice because she really does. She does comfort him and she gives him the courage to try again. You know? And she doesn't say, oh, screw Michael. What does he know? It's just like, you should be proud. There's good work to do. And so he decides, hey, it's good work to do. You're right. I should keep doing that work. I shouldn't give up. Yeah. Because I think he was ready to give up at that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're nearing the end of the episode now. Eleanor finds Tahani crying and she comforts her, beginning to form a real friendship with her. The next morning, the friendship plant is... Blooming? It's a friendship plant. That's what I'm calling it. It's a friendship plant? Yes, it's a friendship plant. All right, it's a friendship plant. The next morning, the friendship plant is blooming. Michael asks Eleanor to work as his assistant and help him figure out what's causing the problems in the good place. That evening, Eleanor meets Gianyu in the town square and he finally speaks, admitting that he doesn't belong there either. Dun, dun, dun! What? <laughs> what? <laughs> As Major would say. Yep. Oh, man. Okay. So, a lot of good stuff here. A lot of good stuff. We don't... Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy. Eleanor has made me happy in this episode. Because not only does she manage to comfort Chidi, but she manages to comfort Tahani, who she doesn't even like. Yeah. She may be gritting her teeth while doing it and saying, like, you're an impressive and special person. And you have a rock and bod. She means that, though. She does mean that. You can totally tell. Yeah. That's genuine as opposed to the other stuff. But even the other stuff feels genuine. I know. She's begrudgingly saying it. She really is. She doesn't want to say it because she doesn't really like Tahani, but. She doesn't want to make her feel good. All of the things that she said, I think. Eleanor still thinks that they're true. Yeah. That she is an impressive and special person and she does deserve to be happy. Like, Eleanor really does believe that Tahani deserves to be here. Yeah. And she doesn't. Right. She doesn't gloat that Tahani is unhappy. And then she reassures her that things between her and Janyu are going to work out. Like, Mm -hmm. she makes her feel better. And we actually see that in that friendship plant as you laugh about that. Yeah. 
She gets back to her place and the plant is blooming. The flowers yeah. are all over the place. It's big. It's bigger than it was when she... More flowers. More flowers. More flowers. Yep. I don't know. It just, it made me happy. It was, of course, it's a little bit like cheesy. Like, oh, is Eleanor going to learn a lesson at the end of every episode? But that's exactly what that's she's supposed kind to be of the doing point. in yeah. this show, right? right? She's supposed to be becoming a better person. So it's nice to see that. And then... I got some feelings about Chidi and Eleanor after when he gives her this big hug. In the morning. And he's so genuinely proud of her. And then she compliments him, which is like reassuring him that he's a good teacher. And he's good at what he's doing. And he's actually making things happen. Like, he always felt insecure about his manuscript and then Michael made him feel even worse about it. Like he wasn't actually accomplishing anything. And then here, Eleanor gets to be a living proof that he is accomplishing something. Mm -hmm. And it was just so sweet. Like I love their friendship because it feels really genuine, really real. Um, yeah. And then like, because earlier Chidi recognizes that despite her failings, Eleanor is making some progress. When she admits that her insecurities are the reason that she's so suspicious of Tahani. And now he's seeing like, okay, she's done something great. I'm going to continue encouraging her. I'm going to give her a hug. I'm going to tell her, hey, you've learned something and show her the proof of that. Like, right. he's doing what a good teacher does and it makes me happy. <laughs> Going back to that point um, about when he asks or when Eleanor admits that she has her insecurities and and... Chidi says, did you ever think that maybe Tahani also has those insecurities and is feeling like that as well? What did you think of that part? Like, when you watched it again, the facade she puts up of being this perfect person, does Eleanor just completely buy that? No. Because she says, like, the biggest problem she has is that she, she kind of makes a funny face weird. and she ends up looking like a baby deer. So it's actually cute. Which, also another Eleanor's totally bi moment. <laughs> I mean, if you're on my team and you think that, because I totally do. I think that Eleanor doesn't believe that Tahani is insecure about things, but she doesn't believe that she's totally pure and good. She thinks she's kind of evil. So she thinks she's not insecure because she's too damn full of herself. Sure. Okay. All right. I want to ask you at this point, what do you think of Chidi and Eleanor's relationship, just in general? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you I think buy it's, it? I, I feel like it's genuine because they both feel like very real people with real issues. Okay. Chidi is genuinely happy with Eleanor at that moment. Mm -hmm. She helped him out. He didn't think that she could do that. And to see proof that she's actually growing. He's really proud of her. Mm -hmm. And I like to see them happy like that. Yeah. I don't buy them as a couple. So you don't ship it. At this point, no. No. Okay. I don't think I ever really did. Okay. Because it seems kind of like a little forced. Mm, okay. Like, hey, it's your soulmate. So... Oh, we don't like each other, or we don't really know each other, so it's not going to happen. But, oh, by the end of the show, they're going to totally get together. Oh, nobody expected that. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Okay, but at this point in the show, when you were first watching it, is mm -hmm. that what you felt like the show was doing? Like they were going to yes. very slowly make them fall in love? Yes, and okay. it frustrated me. Yeah, I think, like, there are moments... Where I like it. And then there are moments where it just doesn't work for me at all. Like, romantically, I mean. Yeah. Um, their relationship as friends, as, like, student-teacher, I totally buy. There's Completely. no problem. Yeah. I, Absolutely. I believe it 100%. But moving it from anything like that to something more romantic, I wasn't sure if they were going to go for it. Um, and I wasn't sure if they would, if I would buy it. Yeah. Um, I don't really feel like a spark between them. Right. But there are moments where they look at each other, like they have this really small moment 
there where they just look at each other and they smile and they feel so genuine and happy and I kind of want it to happen. <laughs> but then that moment's over and I don't want it anymore. Right, yeah. So I think I just really love them as friends and I love him as a mentor for her, mm-hmm. you know? So I think it's great. But maybe that's going to change a little during this rewatch. I don't know if maybe next episode there's going to be a moment and I go... There's the moment. There's that was heat. it right there. There's a spark. I don't know. So we'll see. Stay right. tuned for if Vivian starts to ship it or not, I guess. <laughs> um, okay. Last thing before we get to the twist at the end. What did you think of the friendship plant? It was a little bit in your face. Oh, it was not subtle. It definitely wasn't <laughs> subtle. I mean, it whines at one point like a dog. I kind of liked that moment. Oh, yeah. And it it was still nice to see her efforts realized in the plant. Whether And I don't think she realized that it would have such an effect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't even think she realized she did good things that were that good until she saw the plant. Aw. It worked for me, like, as a device. It was was fine. Um, For the most part, I think they could have been more subtle, but it was okay that they didn't. They didn't go for a more subtle route. Yeah, the show really doesn't do subtlety. A garbage storm, giant shrimp. Yeah, when it comes to Eleanor's effect on The Good Place, right. the show is not subtle. Which the plant is a direct impact of Eleanor's effect on people. Yep, exactly. So. And then... Da, 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 da. Ba, John, you. Okay, so were you totally like blown away when you saw this? Oh, totally. I, as soon as she met with... As soon as John Yu comes into frame, I'm like... Oh, he's going to, like, stare her down. He's going to communicate in, like, written notes. He's going to, like, totally bust her. He's going to have, like, Michael with him or something or threaten to tell Michael but not talk. And then as soon as he speaks up, this all went through my head in, like, the two seconds that you see him before he talks. Oh, yeah? And I'm like, whoa. Oh. Oh, oh. (laughs) Oh my god, what, he doesn't belong here either? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Like Huge. I love that moment, because I was not expecting the show to go in this direction at Me all. Me neither, which is perfect. Yeah. Well, it's, it's great. It's such a relief to have the show do that and take you somewhere that you aren't expecting. Because mm-hmm. the show that you think it's going to be, oh, life lessons with Eleanor, got to learn how to be a better person for like 13 episodes, yay, wahoo. Suddenly it's, nope, there's somebody else that doesn't belong here. Yeah. What's Chidi going to say about that? And then you can't wait to watch the next episode. And then you have to wait a week and you're like, oh my God. Yeah. Unless you're you and you watch it all at the end. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this is huge. Like, I'm so excited about this. And not only because I was a little worried it was going to be life lessons with Chidi and Eleanor, but now... We get this whole other element where suddenly Eleanor is not the only mistake that the good place has made. Yeah. And that Michael has made. So now we're starting to question like, okay, so if Eleanor doesn't belong here and Gianyu doesn't belong here, does anyone belong here? Mm -hmm. Does Chidi, does Tahani, you know, do the random people that we don't know belong here? Like, Yeah, what's going on? Or is it just these two and we're going to have some sort of like relationship developed there where they become confidants like what's gonna happen there was just so much that could be explored so i was so excited when this happened i thought it was great and i did not expect it especially when jianyu stops talking like an adult and starts (laughs) acting talking like you gotta help me homie i'm scared like (laughs) what (laughs) i was not expecting that kind of homie yeah, I didn't vernacular. Expect it. Yeah, I didn't expect that kind yeah. of vernacular, that kind of attitude. His like sudden like freezing up, like oh god, I'm scared. Like yeah, what? Because he seemed so perfectly composed right before then, and then he's like, "You gotta help me. I don't belong here. I don't know what's going on." <laughs> yeah, it was perfect, perfect. And only in episode three, they throw a huge twist at us. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, it was great. It was so great. Um, I'm just going to check my little notes here. 
So I just wanted to point out a few things before we head over to the spoiler zone. We got a few emails this week. Thank and... you for sending us emails. Yes, thank you, thank you. We love to hear from you guys. Just, we love hearing your thoughts because the whole point of doing this show is that we can talk about it and we can continue the conversation with all of you. All right, so our first email was from GJ Corbin. I feel like we're in a strong bad cartoon. <laughs> email! <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Dear Strong Bad. <laughs> all right. So we got an email from G.J. Corbin. So he pointed out that there may be a democracy in The Good Place. Because we were talking about swearing and how it's been banned. And then we talked last episode about pornography. And he was he pointed out that swearing might be banned because it has been requested by a majority. But pornography might be permissible because it's generally a private activity. Hmm. So it's not something that would interfere with daily activity like okay. daily interaction with people right sure. so it's kind of interesting i still stand by my opinion that the good place shouldn't be censoring people right but that's interesting to think of like that there might be a democracy here because it could be like a town hall meeting yeah it could be like voting on it acceptable things like no more blueberry pie on tuesdays because jeanette is allergic to it Sure. I mean, swearing <laughs> is something that would affect more people than just Jeanette. Also, nice name there, <laughs> Jeanette. <laughs> you were just like, it's, uh, name Janet. I was like, Janet. But longer. <laughs> Jeanette. Um, Interesting thought. And then we got another email uh, that kind of brought up the same point about the swear filter. Um, ben emailed us and he said, In the first episode, you say that the good place wouldn't have a swear filter, but I disagree. Since even the two of you disagreed on what would be in a good place, I think it stands that each good place is design designed around its residents and whatever they consider to be paradise. So there will be many out there might be many good places out there that are full of swearing. <laughs> so to me, the idea that they just don't like it is a good enough reason not to have swear words. For sure. I agree. Yeah? So I think you... that is a possibility. Okay. That there could be some good places where people don't mind dropping F-bombs or <laughs> saying other bad words as long as the other inhabitants are okay with it. I still don't know if I agree with you, Ben. Um, I, I, yeah, it's tough I because know. I also think that they shouldn't be censoring. I think that's my problem is not so much that they've put up this rule that, hey, no swearing here, please, or you know, be mindful of other residents, it's that if you actually try to do it, even in the comfort of your own home, you cannot. That's my issue with it. Um, They've taken away your ability to do something. Exactly. So I think that's my problem with it, is it's not just that this place is designed around its residents and whatever they consider to be paradise. It's that the majority here gets to actually make a choice for you. And when it comes to something so simple so as a dictatorship, speech, right? Yeah, like, that's sort of how it feels in a way to me. Just the fact that you can't even do it, mm -hmm. you know? Because, for example, in society, you're not supposed to murder people. But you still can do it. But you can, can do still it. actually do it. It's not like you can, you're going to run up to somebody with a, you know, huge butcher knife and start try to, like, stab it in their chest and suddenly the knife becomes like a... Banana. A banana, exactly. There's no banana life. knife. Although maybe there should be a murder filter that would be kind of nice, I guess. You right? can't kill people in the good place. I'm just saying, in general, like it can't change. That something can change your intent or your outcome is just, or the outcome of your intent, or I guess. even your desire. Some people, Eleanor really wants to swear. Sometimes, yeah, she has a desire to curse. And they've stripped that from her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. So, that's my thoughts about it. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Thanks, Ben. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to cover some of your other thoughts, uh, GJ, Allen, and Ben, in our spoiler zone. So, we're going to head over there now. If you haven't watched the show in its entirety, please don't continue past the music. 
Uh, it's great to watch this show in it, the way it was intended. And if you are leaving us now, that brings us to the end of Forking Bullshirt, a multiverse radio production. If you like our show, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes. Thank you so much to the people who already have. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, you can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or you, and use the hashtag FBullshirt. Or you can find us on Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can also visit our website, multiverseradio.ca, where you can send us an email. And you can check out some of our other podcasts as well. Yeah, we've got a Bob's Burgers podcast, if that is of any interest to you. That's mm-hmm. a lot more fun and a little bit more lighthearted than this show. And we'll see you next week for our review of episode four, Jason Mendoza. Ooh. Ooh. I wonder who that is. No clue. Who could that possibly be? All right. We'll We'll see see you you later. (laughs) We'll see you later. We'll see you later. Thanks so much for listening. Are you stealing my song? <laughs> you just stole my song. How did I steal your song? Because I sang that last week. Oh, don't you? Yeah. Okay, well, no, I'm going to say it was inspired by. Uh, you, you're doing a cover. <laughs> you're doing a doing cover a of cover. my spoiler <laughs> tune. Yep, that's it. All right, so Jason Mendoza. Holy shit. Uh, I can't say those words because... We have a filter on. We have a filter. Right. Holy shirt. Okay? Yeah. Holy mother, mother fork and shirt balls. Jason Mendoza. I am excited to start this because I kind of like him. Like, I really oh God, do like him as a character. He's such a wiener. You don't like him? Oh, I like him, but oh. he's just... Oh, he's such a... He's a dim bulb. He's like a <laughs> ten watt light bulb. <laughs> yeah, he's a total idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a big idiot. Um, I am excited that he's finally here. We're finally learning about him. It yeah. feels like a weirdly long time, but that's just because we watched the episode so many times, and yeah, then we talk about the show for a really long time. But yeah, I'm excited that he's here. There's so much that's gonna happen with him. Yeah, next episode's gonna yeah. be great. Yes, definitely. I won't go too much into that because we will talk about that later. Yeah, literally like the last minute of the show. We don't really need to talk about that. No. So I mentioned G.J. Corbin's email uh, before the spoiler zone, but he also mentioned that we talked at length about animals in the good place last episode, but we completely forgot to mention that it is very possible that animals do live in harmony with animals, with humans, in the real good places. Right. Right. Because we're not. I didn't even think about that last episode. And that's a great point because this is not the good place. Mm -mm. So perhaps in actual good places, there are animals frolicking with their humans, with owners. And, you know, that cat you lost when you were five is with you again. Oh, well, that's so nice. I hope that's true. And I hope we will find out next season. Bingo, I'll see you again. Oh, so Eleanor totally sees Tahani for who she was. Oh, absolutely. 100%. She says, she only does things like this, so we'll talk about how thoughtful and wonderful she is, but I see through her little act. Eleanor is right on target. And she doesn't even, like, she thinks she's right, but she doesn't even realize how right she is. Yeah, and then Chidi spends this whole episode telling her that she's wrong. Oh, Chidi. Only for her to end up being totally on the money. (laughs) <laughs> this episode for me was Let's Pick on Cheaty episode. Oh, really? It was Michael chipping away little bit by bit, constantly just poking, just poking little tiny holes in his demeanor, just waiting for him to finally have a meltdown. Oh. And he pretty much does. Almost. But... He gets close, but then Eleanor reels him back, right? Yeah. And I think there's one moment where after Chidi says, I don't want to, like, this isn't what I want to do. I want to, I want to write my book. Mm -hmm. I believe it's near the end of the arc welding session. Yeah. 
where it almost looks like Michael's like about to smile to himself or like laughing at himself. He's like, man, I'm just, I'm just nailing this guy. He is just getting beat down by me. (laughs) And he's just tearing him apart little bit by little bit. I know you're going to hate cartography. I know you hate all these things, but let me just, you know, put you in all these situations. Where you're going to have to tell me. (laughs) No. No. And it's going to make you feel a little bit uncomfortable to assert yourself because you're not an assertive person. Yeah. I I love it. Yeah. And I think he was playing the long game, too. Like, he wanted Chidi to literally throw his life's work in the trash. (laughs) He got him to do it. And he got him to do it. He got him to do it. He got him to do it. 3,600 pages. His whole life's work. He says none of it is useful. None of it. I don't even know how to parse through that. We gotta start. I don't start even know, clean. man. Like, just no. Ouch! 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, I love it. I also like that. Like, as fun as it is, just to see Janet do different things. And by the way, I love her being all self help. Hashtag blessed Janet. By the end, <laughs> that's great. Um, you know, best life now, Janet. It's also great because he's messing with her functionality and her efficiency in this episode. Like, she can't really help anyone. Mm -hmm. She's spending all of her time with Chidi and Michael being kind of useless because she's just offering fun facts or flirting or being mean. Like, she's not doing her job. She's frustrating people around her. Yeah. And she's not very helpful to the residents in this episode, so... I think it's just another way that he's messing around with the good place. Yeah. You know? And we see here that he can actually program Janet to do things that he wants her to do. Yeah. See, that that was interesting to me. Is he actually changing her functions or is he just telling her to act differently? Because I believe that's all he would need to do is say, Janet, you have to act like this now. Do you think he's saying, Janet, you need to act like a big flirt now? Or is he saying what he told Chidi he asked her to do? Because at the beginning, he's saying, like, I wanted her to be more, you know, casual and conversational. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's what he told Janet? And then she started saying, hump day, working hard, hardly working. Or did he ask her to start saying all of these, you know, colloquialisms that are just super annoying? Well, it's interesting to think, to wonder, I guess, because we still don't know how the Janets work in the good places Mm -hmm. or in the bad place or whatever, because we don't know whether she answers to a higher power or not. Yeah. Because there are Janets in every good place. Right. And in every bad place. Yes. (laughs) As we will find out later. Mm -hmm. But... Do the architects have the power to reprogram them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting to contemplate. I'd love to hear from listeners. Just let us know, like, do you think that Michael gave her explicit instructions, like, be flirty? Or do you think he told her exactly what he tells Chidi, like, Mm -hmm. that I wanted her to be friendlier? What did Michael say? Or did he actually go in some sort of like computer and reprogram yeah, like her hack, actions? Like, like hack into her. Yeah. Could a good place Janet even be manipulated that way? Right. Like, could a good place Janet actually do something that might make people uncomfortable and unhappy? Um, last week, Alan sent us an email and we were we talked a little bit about Michael being omnipresent. Mm-hmm. I think that the plant this week, the friendship plant, supports that theory because it reacts immediately to Eleanor's actions and to Eleanor's comments, right? Like when she says to Chidi about Tahani she's no that good she bench. straight up sucks, bro, Yeah, that's the moment when that plant wilts. So it's very possible that Michael is watching her at that time and is able to like, I don't know, type in some code or something and make the plant wilt. It's possible anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think that kind of lends to that theory. 
Actually, the last thing I'm, I'll point out before we uh, wrap up this episode, Ben wrote in his email, Secondly, my own theory is that it's not actually as hard to get into the good place at my, as Michael makes it seem. To the viewers, this adds more drama to Eleanor's situation, adds to her feeling of hopelessness. After the twist is revealed, it seems that Michael has manipulated everything, and that draws into question everything he's said. It's possible that he only made it seem like you had to be perfect in order to keep Eleanor in a state of fear. Right. And everybody feeling good that they actually made it. Yes. Right? Especially to honey. Yeah, especially to honey, right? She wouldn't want to make it into a good place where like half of the wor- world's population is there. Yeah. She'd want to be somewhere elite. Exclusive party. Yeah. So what do you think? Do you think that the good place is not actually that hard to get into? I want to say yes, that I agree with Ben, that it's possible it's not as hard to get into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I made it it's, up. It's, it's, it's tough because... If it's easy to get in, mm-hmm. then... Then why aren't they there? Yeah, because... Like, especially Chidi and Tahani? Especially Chidi and Tahani, because to me, neither of them, Tahani or Chidi, would deserve to be in the bad place. Okay. So yeah, I, no, I... I feel like it must be pretty pretty difficult. Otherwise, they'd be there. Okay. Do you agree? Um, I don't... I'm not sure. I feel like I'm going to have to circle back to this a little bit later and see how I feel about it, but... Oh, we're done. After this, we're done this episode. I know. (laughs) I meant circle back later in further episodes. Gotcha. Um, Yeah, I feel like I'm going to have to circle back to this because I remember thinking in the finale that it didn't really feel right that Chidi was in the bad place. Right. Like, Tawny felt a little bit more like, okay, I can kind of believe this because she is selfish. She is really condescending. Like, yes, she's raised a lot of money, but does money equal good, right? Like, and it does. Obviously, this money has equaled a lot of really great things for people, but we don't get the sense that she raised this money and then went out and actually volunteered and put in, like, real hard work. Right. In that way. So, Tahani, I was like, okay, I can kind of buy it. But Chidi was a little bit harder to buy because I just, I have a harder time imagining that someone should be punished because of unintended outcomes, I guess. Yeah. You know, like he's yeah. frustrating to be around, but did he really like make people feel awful? It yeah. seems more like he annoyed everybody on Earth. you know he got under everyone's nerves because he couldn't make decisions but did he actually make them miserable Mm -hmm. so anyway i think it it's probably not as hard to get into like i don't think florence nightingale is actually in the bad place like he says she is but maybe like a middle Middle, you know, not like super, super exclusive, like it's portrayed to be at the beginning of the show. So maybe like halfway between medium place and the good place. Yeah, maybe, maybe something like that. Yeah, I could buy it. Yeah. So, so I'm kind of on your side, Ben. We'll see if I end up being like completely on your side by the end of this season. Yeah. All right. I think we will wrap things up there. Thanks so much if you stayed with us during the spoiler zone and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.